I have、um, a studio space in Vancouver. I've been in my studio for eight years now, and I share it with three other people. Not all that time is devoted to rug hooking. I also do surface design work that includes screen printing, collage, and hand stitch. And recently, I've begun experimenting with sculptural forms, and I've been making soft sculptures using felted blankets and、uh, interior design samples. I call my studio my happy place. When I walk through the studio door, I'm always filled with that sense of possibility. I have a plan for the day, but I'm never quite sure how it's going to unfold because the creative process is at times really unto itself. I participate in two open studio events:、uh, first Saturday and the East Side Culture Crawl. And in Vancouver, artists open their studios to the public, and people come into the studio. They can see finished work, they can see work in progress, sketchbooks, and there is a lot of conversation that takes place. We have conversations about life, we have conversations about art, and people share their stories with me, and I love. Hearing about the kind of handwork or art that they might be doing, my earliest inspiration was Gloria Kraus, who experimented with materials and techniques. When I first started really doing research, even before I began rug hooking,、uh, I would take books out of the library, and Gloria Kraus had a book in the library called New Materials and Techniques. And I took that book out repeatedly, over and over and over again. I combed through it, and she also had a video that was available, and that was an amazing resource. And I watched that video I don't know how many times. And from early on, I knew that rug hooking had great potential for exploration, for experimentation. And she would be、uh, very influential in terms of shaping my approach and my attitudes、uh, towards my art practice. My first workshop that I ever took was with Barb Kennedy in Calgary, Alberta. Barb was very generous with her time, and I was a new rug hooker. I'd been rug hooking for about three months at that point, and I remember asking her about which design I should hand hook. And one design was a geometric rug that was about two by three feet, and the other was a hall runner that was three feet by ten feet, and it was a design that had created that had been inspired by a family vacation. And because I was new to rug hooking, even though I was able to create the design and transfer it to the backing, I had no idea where to even begin to hand hook a piece like this. And so I was hesitating, and I asked Barb, and that's when Barb she asked me very simply, "Which one do you love?" And for me, the answer was immediate, and I decided to go with the three by ten runner. I got to the workshop, and again, you know, as I said, I, I had no idea where to begin, but Barb was amazing, and she. Took me through the process over the course of five days of really breaking down the design, focusing on the、uh, design elements, and each day we would do a different design element, so that by the end of the five days I knew exactly where I had to go, and I left the workshop、uh, feeling really confident, and that was really to Barb Kennedy's credit. I've been teaching rug hooking for over 20 years. And、uh, I love teaching introductory level workshops.、Um, it's exciting to work with people who are new to、uh, the hand hook surface, and I love taking them through the steps on how to develop a technique, and and also just to help them to develop their own. A、creative voice, their own creativity. I also teach advanced level courses. I teach color. I teach design, and I also teach courses that focus on new materials and techniques. And that's definitely a nod to Gloria Kraus, who continues to be an inspiration for me in in my art practice. 
and it, it's reflected in in uh, in my teaching. I teach from my studio here in Vancouver, and I also uh, travel to teach. I don't travel very often, but every once in a while I, I will. I tend to meet with creative groups from a variety of different backgrounds. Um, several years ago, I was meeting with a group called Sci-Fi, and we were several textile artists. We'd get together every couple of months, and one of us would lead our gathering and teach the others a particular technique. So sometimes it was rug hooking, sometimes it was hand stitch. It could be something like making a sock monkey, or it could be weaving baskets using linen thread. But it was a wonderful way for us to get together to share our passion. And because we had such different interests in terms of textile arts, there were weavers and knitters and uh, mixed media, um, we were always bringing new ideas to the conversation. Another group that I get together with today is called uh, The Bees, and we are a group of several visual artists who get together every few weeks, and we do a variety of different things. People bring their own thing, and sometimes it's mending, sometimes it's knitting, sometimes someone's making a dress, Maybe someone's making some cards, finishing a piece of art for an exhibition. And it's a group of assemblage artists, ceramic artists, paper cutting artists. Uh, so it's very diverse. We talk about art, we talk about life. And sometimes we will go together as a group to a gallery, to a gallery opening. And we also provide a lot of support and uh, encouragement to one another in our art practice. I sell my artwork through my studio and also through uh, galleries. From time to time, I will sell my artwork in a store if I've been invited to exhibit. Um, I have actually exhibited in a clothing store, a beautiful bespoke clothing store with natural fibers, linens and wool, silk clothing. And it was actually a perfect fit for the textile work that I, I had. And I was able to sell several pieces in that venue. Initially, I hesitated because I was more attached to the idea of selling work in a gallery or in my studio. And I spoke with a friend of mine and she said to me, you know, when you present your work in these different kinds of venues, what it does is that it gives people an opportunity to see the work in a new way. And that was, that was really good advice. I've been experimenting with form materials and techniques for about 15 years. You know, when I first began rug hooking, I was working with very, what I consider to be very traditional materials, which is uh, wool fabric off the bolt that I would hand dye, recycled clothing that I would also hand dye. And I worked with those materials for several years. And in 2005, I started to shift away from that. And I began to work with different materials. And I began by uh, introducing metal. Um, I was working with synthetics, different kinds of yarns. And then over the years, it continues to shift and it continues to change. I was working with manufacturers' waste materials for a period of time. And uh, my most recent work, incorporating zippers into the work uh, along the uh, vertical edge of uh, pieces. So I'll have several pieces and there'll be zippers on both sides. And these pieces can uh, be attached, detached, rearranged, and then uh, attached again. I enjoy exhibiting my work. I, I love seeing my work in uh, a gallery setting. It's probably a, a few things. One is that it helps me as an artist to see my work in a gallery setting. If it's a solo exhibition, I get to see the narrative uh, that's been created in the series. It's also a great opportunity, a wonderful opportunity actually, to meet people and to talk about the work, to hear their ideas, their thoughts. It's a wonderful way to engage in conversation 
about a whole range of topics with sometimes with friends and often with complete strangers, people who I may have never had the opportunity to meet. Thanks for watching my video. If you would like to see more, click the subscribe button. If you would like to support making these videos, you can donate via the button on the banner of my YouTube channel. You will also find my social media links there.